Hello, my name is Kamila Kokotkanikuła from Gdańsk University of Technology in Poland. And I am Mira Balzuk from the University of Groningen in the Netherlands. We are members of the European Network of Open Education Librarians and we'd like to invite you to the second installment of our podcast series dedicated to the UNESCO recommendation on open educational resources, OER. Today, we'd like to introduce you to the five objectives or areas of action mentioned in the document. These five areas of action are a series of steps that all member states have committed to implement in the coming years. Libraries can support governments in this call. Let's take a look at the first area, which is capacity building, developing the capacity of all key education stakeholders to create, access, reuse, repurpose, adapt and redistribute OER, as well as to use and apply open licenses in a manner consistent with national co copyright legislation and international obligations. It covers the postulates previously for formulated by the community of educators, teachers and scientists. It recognized the need for change in the area of education, re rewarding and promoting activities related to the creation of high-quality OER. It reforms the antiquated education system that prevents the wider use of OER in education. In so doing, it brings open policies to education, linking it to the open science. What does it mean in practice? In above, all aims at building awareness among stakeholders about OER as a way to increase access to educational and research resources, enhancing the opportunities to learn effectively. Since awareness alone is not enough, capacity building is needed to upskill all actors involved so that they become able to manage educational resources complying with copyright requirements and using openly licensed tools, platforms and standards correctly. All this is done in the effort to draw attention to the very existence of open educational resources and to the fact that OER can be used in education as much as commercial products. In addition, if teachers and students better understand copyright and licensing, this both prevents them from breaking the law when creating OER, and open licensing gives them control over how their OER can be reused, thereby enabling more access to education for all. The second area of action states, Developing supportive policy, encouraging governments and education authorities and institutions to adopt regulatory frameworks to support open licensing of publicly funded educational and research materials, develop strategies to enable the use and adaptation of OER in support of high quality, inclusive education and lifelong learning for all, supported by relevant research in the area. This recommends the support and implementation of policies and practices that support the creation, adoption and reuse of open educational resources. Countries are encouraged to develop, update and implement legal or policy regulatory frameworks that encourage the use, reuse, redistribution and creation of OER, especially when public funding is involved. These should be aligned with existing strategies for open access, open science, and open software. Creating a network of experts and practitioners or communities of practice is also a priority. Developing a quality assurance mechanism for OER in quality assurance strategies for teaching and learning materials is also key. The third action area is Encouraging effective, inclusive, and equitable access to quality OER. 
supporting the adoption of strategies and programs, including through relevant technology solutions that ensure OER in any medium are shared in open formats and standards to maximize equitable access, co-creation, curation, and searchability, including for those from vulnerable groups and persons with disabilities. With it, UNESCO recommends the creation of such materials that are representative of learners in formal and non-formal education context irrespective of inter alia, age, gender, physical ability, and socioeconomic status, as well as those in vulnerable situations, indigenous peoples, those in remote rural areas, including nomadic populations, people residing in areas affected by conflicts and natural disasters, ethnic minorities, migrants, refugees, and displaced persons. These aspects need to be included in strategies and programs for creating, accessing, reusing, adapting, and redistributing OER. OER authors from all sorts of communities should therefore take into account local circumstances or educational objectives. So considering different needs when providing OER, for example, access to the internet. To achieve this, it is necessary to provide various forms of OER, including online and offline ones in different languages, being mindful of gender and cultural sensitivities. We also need both public and private investment in ICT infrastructure and broadband and need to continue development in research of OER while assuring quality standards. The recommendation in the fourth area states, nurturing the creation of sustainability models for OER supporting and encouraging the creation of sustainability models for OER at national, regional, and institutional levels, and the planning and pilot testing of new sustainable forms of education and learning. This aimed at gaining access to development models and the possibility of using them in practice. UNESCO recommends that the member states, also within their education system, make an effort to encourage the development of comprehensive, inclusive, and integrated sustainable models for OER. This can be achieved by simplifying or expanding public procurement rules to facilitate the creation, translation, adaptation, storage, sharing, archiving, preservation, and maintenance of open educational resources. In addition, countries and institutions should build support and strengthen partnerships and networks. To fund OER and open education, new revenue models and streams such as donations, memberships, pay what you want and crowdfunding are needed, while ensuring that costs are not shifted to individual educators or students. Organizations should also optimize their budgets and funds for education and research support the creation of high-quality open materials. Developing mechanisms that are more sustainable over time for the effective implementation of multilingual OER and open licenses are necessary. This is both from a financial perspective and a quality one. Where quality is controlled, OERs are improved, stakeholders are more involved, and collaboration is key. The final fifth area of action speaks to promoting and reinforcing international cooperation. Supporting international cooperation between stakeholders to minimize unnecessary duplication in OER, development, investments, and to develop a global pool of culturally diverse, locally relevant gender sensitive, accessible education materials in multiple languages and formats. This indicates the need for wider international cooperation. Effective promotion of OER can be carried out on the basis of comprehensive, 
cross-border cooperation through projects and programs leveraging existing network structures. This action proposes that together one can build common capacity, develop COPES or infrastructure such as repositories or conduct joint research. Establishing regional and international funding mechanisms, creating peer networks, adding OER clauses to international agreements in the field of education, understanding legal differences, the recommendation encourages development of a common international copyright exception and limitation framework, one that each country can be abide by. We must continue the intercultural dialogue and skills development. These five areas of action are a comprehensive set of recommendations that help countries and institutions involved in education to navigate towards a more open education world. Thank you for listening to the second episode. The next five will delve deeper into each area of action. Stay tuned. Stay tuned.